What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Casual Big Ten Podcast. Today is Friday, October 6th, 2023. My name's Kent Peterson. I'm the host of this show, and on Fridays, I'm always joined by Bet Big Brad and B1G Wilson. Wilson, what is going on, brother? How you doing, man? Had a little bit of a bounce back. I feel like I feel like you brought the energy down immediately from that excellent intro. <laughs> Rate that intro one to ten, by the way. I'm, I'm a little sick, man. Give me a break. Give me a break. Can I get a rating on the intro, though? From Brad? No, That's from you. Ten. One through ten. Ten. It wasn't your best work. Oh, wow. I felt like it was my best work. Brad, how are you doing this evening, well, sir? I'm doing great, man. I'm happy to be here. I'm ready to rock and roll. I got my picks ready to go. Couldn't be more excited. <laughs> well, that was a good one. That was like an eight. That's what I'm talking about, bro. Let's go. Let's get in into here. this, man. Um, here. As always, guys, I have to remind everybody that's watching or listening that this is not experts that you're hearing from right now. We are not giving financial advice nor gambling advice. This show is for entertainment purposes only. And part of that entertainment starts with us talking about what is going on on Twitter every week. I personally host the big board for what the lines are and the over-under, and I have the wrong one pulled up. Brad, does that surprise you as I look for the other one? Absolutely not. <laughs> We're going to read every comment that took place on our big board that we post as a team. Like I said, I do it by myself. And uh, we'll we'll comment on the comments. And the first one is for Wilson. It's from Kyle Biting. B-I-T-T-I-N-G. Is that biting or bidding? Bidding. Bidding. Kyle Bitting. He says, despite not playing this week, PSU hits the backdoor cover. Good teams win. Great teams cover. We are. Lion emoji, lion emoji. We are. Nice. We are. <laughs> okay. All right. Myself and Wilson at this point. I guess Jesus. so. I guess so. He is under the weather though, so we got to give him some credit. Um, Brad, Isaiah Walker yeah. gone last week. He's back. He's back. He took a week off. I think it was Isaiah's bye week last week, but he's back. Um, that's some crazy line movement on Purdue. I got them at three and a half. But I like them outright. Michigan and Rutgers cover Ohio State, Maryland over. Thoughts on those picks? I think Isaiah, I think Isaiah is on it. the mark right now. He nailed it. I like it. You guys are really giving the feedback today. I love it. What, how, what are you looking for exactly on that? Yes, I, he nailed it. I said. <laughs> All right. Back to Wilson. Wilson, Friday Night Lights says, against the spread, I like Illinois, Rutgers, Michigan, and Maryland this week. Uh, most of them sound good. I don't like the Maryland one at the end, but all the, other, the first three were all right. Don't like the Maryland one. We're going to definitely talk about that this evening because I have yes. some there we are. I have some things to say. Uh, Brad, back to you. Boiler in Texas. I'm assuming a Purdue fan. Boiler in Texas. From Texas as well, or just down there while they tweet? I think he lives in Texas. Actually, he has a podcast too. I've listened to it a couple of times. Um, Boiler in Texas says Purdue wins and Iowa. Oh, I'm sorry. Purdue wins versus Iowa because they're playing each other. And it goes over, he said. Mm, Back to back Iowa overs? No way. No, probably not. I don't, I don't. I don't know. I like the. I like Purdue, but I don't like the over. Okay, uh, Wilson. Back to you, Jackson. Train emoji, flag emoji, crocodile emoji. You remember him? He's been here before. I do. He has been here before. He put the exact scores for each game. So he says: Illinois forty-five twenty-one, Wisconsin twenty-one fourteen, Purdue twenty-four fourteen, Ohio State thirty-five thirteen, Northwestern forty-five to zero. Not a line we're going to be talking about because there is no line on that game. And then Michigan 35 to 14. 
So once again, that's Illinois, Wisconsin, Purdue, Ohio State, Northwestern, and Michigan all winning. Thoughts on that? There were two that uh, stuck out to me that I tend to agree with, and it was the Ohio State, Maryland, and the Michigan, Minnesota ones that he had. I guess we'll talk about that in a little bit. We will talk about that in a little bit, but not before we talk about Allie Kate. The ladies are here, Brad. It's ladies' night, week six, ladies' night. Uh, Ladies night, and the feeling is right. She says, uh, maybe I'm... Oh, yes, it's me. <laughs> Allie uh, reports that maybe I'm biased, but plus 14 seems wild for Rutgers. She is a Rutgers fan. I'm clicking on her profile. She is a Rutgers fan, I believe. Seems like a Go lot Knights. for Rutgers at Wisconsin, plus 14. Or is she a Wisconsin fan? I, I can't be sure based on her profile. I just can't be sure. Is it just red? Is it just a red background? Uh, her. I'm gonna put her all the way on blast. I guess Emmy Award winning baseball fan, proud Rutgers alum. So still oh. question. She could be a Wisconsin fan still though. All right. Whatever you say. Um. I, now at this point, I forgot what her comment was. She says maybe I'm biased, <laughs> but plus fourteen seems wild for Rutgers. So she Does she mean she wild be like it's too much or not enough? Yeah. I think she's saying it should be like plus seven, maybe. Mm. Mm. I tend I tend to agree with her too. I definitely agree with her. I think we I'm not uh, give away my pick that I'm picking Rutgers or anything like that, but I agree with what she's trying to throw out there. I, I agree as well. Uh Wilson, back night. to you. <laughs> back to you. This is from LMZ420 Andy 800. What a name. Michigan, Maryland, and Rutgers bet the ranch. I don't have a ranch to bet. Do you, Wilson? I do not. wish I did, but I'm curious. Is he taking the spreads with all those, or is he uh, money lining those? I mean, we we uh, we keep it official around here. I, he has to be talking about the spreads. We can't be sure. Well, interesting. interesting. We should keep track of all these people's records, so then we can call them out the next episode on their picks. Definitely not going to happen. Uh, Brad, back to you. Team <laughs> Cerisi Racing. Man, tough to read names. Uh, my prediction, the Big Ten is so unpredictable this year that none of these spreads will get within five points of the final score difference. He's saying it's impossible to really guess what the scores are going to be at this point because the Big Ten is so unpredictable. Wow. Wow. Are you are you are you with us still or are you doing something else right now? No. <laughs> I was answering my doorbell. Uh yeah, it is. I agree. It's unpredictable. But they could go a couple different ways depending on who's playing who and what's happening and who's playing who and where. There's a lot. Weather. Weather's a factor sometimes. Let's talk about the weather. Let's open up the phone lines and talk about the weather this weekend, shall we? Finally. <clears throat> First caller. All right. All right, Wilson, last one is going to you. It's uh, Corey Cordasco. He says Nebraska plus three and a half. Rutgers plus 14. Iowa minus one and a half. Maryland plus 19 and a half. And Michigan minus 19 and a half. Again, I, I don't know if we should start doing the comments afterwards, after we've made our picks, but I like doing them at the top. Um and then trying to respond to them without giving our giving away our own picks. Uh, Wilson, any comments on that? It does seem like a lot of the uh, commenters like the Rutgers and the points in that game. We'll see. We got some smart commenters. That's why. Could be, could be a trap. Could be. Oh, nice Vegas trap. Could be. Um, one thing that's not a trap right now, though, is Brad's picks. We forgot to mention this at the top. The crown is still... I didn't even have to move it this week. Guy is red hot right now. Last Hi. week, let me just read this off really quickly and make sure I'm getting this right. Week five, Bet Big Brad goes nine and three in 12 games, picks up nine wins. Uh, yours truly, five and seven. The only person that was under five seven last, or under 500, I should say. I'm not under five seven, by the way. I'm tall. Uh, not as tall as these guys, but uh, Wilson goes seven and five last week, 
And uh, we're even now, Wilson. If you look at the overall records, we are both 48 and 48, exactly at 500. But that big Brad, 10 games over 500, 53 and 43. He's a sharp. Brad, your thoughts? I don't know what you guys are doing. This seems to be pretty simple. Yeah, you just got to pick games, right? Yep, just pick them. Just pick them. You just got to pick them correctly, though, is the thing. And I think that's where you guys are having some issues. You know? I guess so. You're wrong a lot. Both of you have been wrong a lot lately. The thing is, we've been wrong the exact same amount of times that we've been right, though. Yeah. That's not going to be good enough to win the championship belt, though. You ever think about that, though? We're actually not wrong a lot. Same amount as we're right. You're just wrong more than I am. That's true. Uh, enough enough talking about the overall records, though. It's time to make a comeback. Let's get into this week's games. First one, Friday night tomorrow. Uh, we're recording on Thursday night. These lines that we're talking about came out on Tuesday, I believe. We have Illinois. We have Nebraska, Illinois at home. They are favored by three and a half. The over-under is 43 and a half. Nebraska is the worst offense in the Big Ten, but fear not, Corn Hub, you are playing the worst defense in the Big Ten. Uh, don't know what's going to happen here, but something has got to give. Somebody has got to score. Somebody has got to get a stop, one way or another. When that, when those two teams are facing off against each other, those two units, I should say, somebody's got to do good this Friday night uh, at 8 p.m. on FSN, FS1. I'm sorry, FSN is not a thing anymore. I don't think Wilson. Take over the talking for a second. What's going to happen in this game? Um, I'm going to go with Illinois in the under. Uh, no rhyme or reason. These teams both suck. Though I will give Illinois the advantage since it's a you know, Friday night game. Booze might be flowing. Decent environment. So I'm going to give them the edge and go Illinois in the under. Brad, do you agree with that? Halfway. Halfway okay. agree. I'm going Illinois strictly because they're at home. This is how I felt about the, the Purdue game last week. Um, I think Illinois gets the edge this time. Nebraska is hard to figure out, and I'm not going to take too much time talking about it. I'm going Illinois. And I'm taking the over. I think when it comes to these type of situations, the worst versus the worst, I think the offense uh, finds a way to, to get it done. So I think there's going to be some points put on the board. Um, I agree with you halfway on that. I do think points are going to be put on the board, but I think Nebraska is going to be doing the scoring, and I am taking Nebraska plus the points. Speaking of points, Nebraska plus the three and a half, I'll take the over, and we will uh, not have to discuss this game any longer. This is not a game that I'm excited to watch, by the way. Nebraska oh, versus Illinois. Some of these Friday night games I got like kind of excited about going into the weekend, but this is not one of them. Um, one game that I am very excited to talk about, though, is Maryland. Five and O oh, Maryland say it twice for the people in the back because everyone's talking about Ohio state right now. Five and O oh, Maryland, five and O oh, Maryland going down to Ohio state. The spread is 19 and a half for the Buckeyes over under the largest in the big 10 this week, 58 and a half Brad, take it over. What's going to happen in this game? Man, I had, I haven't been overly impressed with Ohio State this year, and I think that's a that's a brand spread, a brand name spread. They're getting that off of who they are. Maryland is not scared of Ohio State. They're not. And I don't think they're going to win the game per se, uh, but 19 and a half is, is too much for me, even though it's at Ohio State. Uh, Maryland's look pretty good. I don't think they're going to be able to stop Ohio State, but I do think they're going to be able to score on them and keep it close. Um, with that, 58 and a half is a lot of college football points. Mm -hmm. That's I'm going under on that just because. Just because. Okay. Wilson? Going Ohio State to cover the 19 and a half and the under. Loser. I think Ohio State defense is going to be able to shut down Maryland. We'll score maybe, you know, 13 points. OK, um, I've made this very that's clear. Shutting down, though? Are we calling that shutting down 13 points? Yeah, that's a, a shutdown. 
in an over under game of 59 points, yeah, that's a shutdown. Yeah, that's a shutdown in a big over under like that. That's a shutdown, Brad. Okay. Yeah. I, it's a shutdown. It's officially a shutdown, then. That's right. Putting the clamps on the ass. Carry, said. carry on. How many points do you think Ohio State's going to score, though? 30 something in the 30s. So 30 something to 13. Mm -hmm. Is that your your fence lock of the day? That is my my lock of the week. Oof. Ohio State minus 19 and a half. Wow. You, know, you were supposed to come up with a new name because Brad's got locks and I've got zip ties. So what, you, did you come up with a new one? That was your homework two weeks ago. Oh, well, failed that one. Oh, dang. Uh, you're probably going to fail this, too, because I don't think Ohio State's going to cover. In fact, I have been very vocal about this. I think that Maryland is going to win outright on the road at Ohio State. I've said it from the rooftops. I'm standing by it. If I'm wrong, I will continue to stand by it. I don't mind being wrong about this. I haven't made a bold prediction yet this year about any real big upsets. The only one that was like kind of borderline close to this was I said that in the preseason, Northwestern would beat Minnesota, but that's not as big as this, though. Um, I'm saying that Maryland is going to win this game. 19 and a half point underdogs. I've already talked about this. I don't care. Don't care it's on the road. I think that when you look at the quarterback position, Tua versus McCord, um, there's really no doubt in my mind who is the better quarterback. The only thing that really scares me is really what Wilson said. I know that Ohio State's defense is better, but Maryland is no slouch in this area. They're fourth in the Big Ten in uh, defensive points allowed this year, so I think that they can get just enough stops and uh, make Kyle McCord's butthole pucker up just a little bit, and I think that the Maryland Terrapins are going to get the win. I'm also taking the over. I think it's going to be a shootout, and uh, Maryland's going to outscore them in this game. I think their offense is that potent. Corey Deitches, two touchdowns, and, uh, you know, I think Tua runs in to himself. So there's four touchdowns right there for Maryland. And uh, like I said, I think they're going to win the game. I do want to hear what you guys think about that, that the bold prediction that I made. And also, uh, I do want to mention as well, because I forgot to text you guys this, the tweet that I put out from my episode on Wednesday, just a clip, uh, so many comments about uh, how I'm just doing it for clicks, first of all, which is, I, mean, I, I don't even know what to say when people say that to me. I'm just like, I post shit all the time. Sometimes things get more views than others. It doesn't mean that I did it for clicks. But the other thing that I thought was crazy is I think at this moment there's 15 bookmarks on that tweet. So I think that the Ohio state fans are waiting for Saturday afternoon. If they win, um, Brad, what do you think about that prediction though? I like it. I, I don't fully agree with it. I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think though. And so with that said, anything can happen. If they keep it close, anything can happen. Wilson, how, much shit, how much shit should I talk on Twitter? If I'm right about this, like, do I go full like crazy and like post a video and like call out everybody in my mentions that told me I was dumb? Might as well. I mean, you've been up front about it. It's better than, you know, not saying anything and then talking smack after you win. So you've been talking before the game. Might as well after and reap the benefit, you know? Yeah. Well, I do think you're going to be very wrong. I don't understand the hate for the Ohio State quarterback. So what has he done? Uh, went into Notre Dame and won a night game. Oh, they shouldn't Notre have won that game, bro. They shouldn't even won that game. It was no, a look. top ten matchup night game. His first true road game start like that. That's, and he laid an egg besides one drive. Yeah. I don't. I don't hate him. By the way, I don't hate Kyle McCord. I just. I just think that the better quarterback is on the other team this weekend. I thought that in the Notre Dame game as well. I'll be honest. I was wrong about that. I thought they had the better quarterback. I actually think he played a little bit better in that game. But, uh, you know, Ohio State did win that game. Fair and square. They won the game. They went on the road. You're absolutely right. But it just wasn't that, like, as Brad was talking about, the name recognition, like, it wasn't that, like, Ohio State win that I was, like, expecting in that game, I guess. I don't know. Even though I, I heard the pick up to lose that game, too. They just look different. I think that's the reason why people are feeling that way. But I think you're right. Maryland's quarterback's better, but I think you're overestimating the gap between the two. 
is all. Mm. Maybe. We're going to find out on Saturday. I can't wait. I can't wait. I really don't even... like. I understand, like, 19 and a half points, that's a huge underdog. So, th- realistically, Ohio State's probably going to win this, win this game. I had a back and forth with somebody about that yesterday. He was like, don't get back on here and say, that's what Ohio State's supposed to do. And it's like, well, I responded to him. I was like, that is what they're supposed to do. They're favored by 19 and a half points. It's like, that's why it's called a bold prediction, because it's a big underdog. But uh, I don't know. Let's see if anyone's got any bold predictions in this game. It's Rutgers. It's Wisconsin. Rutgers on the road. Going up to Madison. Wisconsin favored by an even 14. I could not find it at 14 and a half or 13 and a half or anything different than this. Uh, the Badgers favored by 14. Rutgers and the Badgers. If you combine their points, the over is 45, 44 and a half. Jesus, I cannot talk tonight. Uh, I'll go first on this one just to get the talking over with. I'm taking Rutgers with the points. I'm taking the over. I like Rutgers this year. I've called them America's team. Um, Speaking of quarterbacks, I really like Rutgers quarterback. Gavin Wimsett has looked good this year. He's getting better every single week. I think that um, Rutgers just keeps it close in this game. I know it's on the road, but again, Rutgers defense has not been that bad this year. So I think that they can keep uh, Tanner Mordecai in check. And uh, maybe even that run game in check because they're missing their backup running back at this point too. So let's go to Brad. What do you think is going to happen in this game up in Madison? Yeah, I like what you're saying. Uh, Rutgers is the Big Ten darling this year. The darling of the Big Ten. Uh, America's darling. Just, they're just boring. I I haven't even – I haven't caught any of Wisconsin's games, to be honest with you. I don't know how, but uh, – We watched the Wisconsin I, game when you were here, I think. Week one, didn't we? Mm-mm. Okay. My bad. I don't think so. Anyway, uh, I think 14 is too much, so I'll take the points with Rutgers, and uh, I'm going over. I think I think uh, 44 is low for this game, actually. All right, Wilson, your thoughts? I'm taking Rutgers as well, but I'm going the under just to uh, try to gain a point on you guys. That's always a, I, I learned last week that that's a mistake, by the way, when I took the uh, mm-hmm. Iowa under against Michigan State. That was a huge mistake. I actually had... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I had picked. All that matters is what you pick right here on the show. And I want to know what Wilson's picking in this next game. It's Iowa minus one and a half. Purdue coming to town. Over under is 39 and a half points. Uh, Wilson, what's going to happen in this game with Deacon Hill starting quarterback for the Iowa Hawkeyes? I'm going to go with Purdue to win outright. But for the sake of this show, the uh, take them in the points. I'm going to go with an under. I think uh, Iowa's offense is going to be back to uh, shit canister and score, you know, maybe one touchdown the whole game. And I think Purdue's winning and it'll be an under. All right, Brad. Yeah, same. I mean, I, they don't need to go back anywhere. They've stayed the same. They only scored one offensive touchdown last week. They had a fucking pick six and a punt return. But, but I'm not mad about it. I'm not but, mad about it. But it looked like they were turning the corner that first drive, and then the second drive had a little unfortunate injury. Yeah. Long, they would have put up 40 if he didn't get hurt. With that being the case, though, Iowa might not score another offensive touchdown the rest of the season because they looked like booty buns. And uh, Purdue <sighs> – I can't figure them out either, but I do like Purdue in this game to win. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a lot of points because Iowa's defense is still good. So I think it's going to be very low scoring, but uh, Purdue pulls it out. So yeah, Purdue in the under. Yeah. You say they're going to win outright as well? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I think Purdue wins outright. Uh, we're all on the same page here. Um Looks like I'm the only one taking the over in this game, though. Um, and I think it's going to be all Purdue. Purdue's been scoring some points this year now, guys. And I think that I think that Iowa's defense, This is, I said this on uh, Wednesday, I think this is the week that Iowa's defense falls apart and uh, they get scored on. I don't know why. I have no reason to say that. 
Um, I also said that the Chicago Bears were going to win tonight, and they scored 17 points in a row to start the game. So I don't know what the score is right now. But I just sometimes say things because I feel it in my loins. And this is one that's this is coming. This is a loin pick right here. Um, I'm going Purdue and the uh, over. And I'm with you guys. I think Purdue wins this game outright. I think I could just hear the announcers right now on Saturday saying like, man, this Iowa defense has been so good this year. I just don't know what's happening with. Uh, I don't know how Purdue's getting to them. That's what I hear happening in my. I don't agree with that. I just think my, it's. <laughs> you hear voices in your head a lot. Uh, yeah, this is not a therapy session, though, so let's just move on to the next game. It's the battle for the little brown jug. Michigan has won it 43 out of the last 46 times. Uh, the jug is, is it even brown anymore, or is it just maize and blue at this point? Um, I want to go first on this game because I've already talked about this game a little bit. Michigan's going to win this game by 100. Minnesota is trash. I think at the beginning, they're one of the teams I wrote off this year, and I wrote them off in June, and everything that I've said about them has pretty much come to fruition at this point. So um, I was right about Minnesota, and I think I'm going to continue to be right about Minnesota. They don't have a defense, really. Their defense looked good against Nebraska, and I, I want to mention this one more time. Nebraska is the 14th ranked offense in the Big Ten out of 14. So Minnesota's defense looked great against the worst offense against in the Big Ten. Um, unfortunately for them, though, Michigan is not the worst offense in the Big Ten. In fact, it's probably, I haven't looked at the numbers, but I think it's the best. So um, Michigan's going to win this game by 30. <laughs> and what what did I do? Did I go like this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, my bad. I think it's the best. I think it's the best. I don't know, I don't know what you want me to say. I don't know what you want me to say. Uh, Michigan wins it by 30, though. Minnesota might not score. Brad, what do you see happening in this game? Oh, by the way, I'm taking the uh, under in this game. 35-0, to zero, Michigan. Mm. Interesting. I have gone uh, against Michigan covering all year. This is going to be the first time I switch it up. There's no chance. There's no chance that they fail to cover this. I think it's way too low based on what I've seen from these two teams. If I had money in my account, I would be throwing all of it on this game. I got Michigan covering. I like the over, though. I think Minnesota scores a couple. I think Michigan could put up 45 by themselves again. So they, they got to score like 45 47, though. They got to score 47. I just now. said it could be 45 to 3, and that means 48 points. My bad. That's on me for stepping on your toes. Thank you. Uh, Wilson, I won't step on your face, though. Go ahead, Wilson. I'm going to go with uh, Michigan in the under. Uh, I do think Michigan's going to beat the hell out of them. Um, it's really just a question of does Minnesota get to double digits or not? Um, and I don't think they will, so I'm going to take the under. Michigan in the under. It's going over, guys. I think I'm 100% on both the spread and over-under in Michigan games. Are you serious? I might have missed one, but I'm, it's like a 80% plus record on it. You know what my record is so far with Michigan games? Probably the opposite. Zero. Zero percent. I have missed every cover and over under in Michigan games. It's not going to happen this week, though. Um, I'm going to be right. It's Michigan and it's the under. All right. That's the show. I appreciate everybody for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And if you're listening in your car... Uh, drive safely, you know, get to where you're going before you pull your phone out and make those picks because we just gave you guys some heaters for this weekend. Brad, you got anything to say to close up the show? Uh, nope. All right, Wilson. Nope. Got All nothing. right. We'll be back next week with week six of Bet Big. And as always, we will see you guys in the future.